Thank you for letting me come along. Press enter. What's that? That's a tricky bit? Start. This is a very short entrance to the lecture that I give to my um, undergraduate students who have absolutely no interest in occupational health and safety because they're actually there to do another course that they're not particularly interested in anyway, but they have to do Oc Health and Safety. So I start with my wonderful equation that says a hazard becomes a risk in a context, and that context is made up of your exposure components. So you understand things about hazards, you understand things about the task, the equipment, the, um, and it's all in a dynamic equilibrium with the risks and the controls that you have in place. So your hazards can be any kind of um, energy exchange, mechanical, ergonomic, gravitational. The task that you're looking at could be anything from working in an office through to um, being an AMBO, working on a construction site, um, could be working with uh, robots in a manufacturing site. So your task informs what kind of hazards you're, or risks you're going to have. You also have to understand the equipment that you're going to use. That might just be a computer, but it also might be robots or powerful tools or tools used in a ditch. Um, so you have to understand what you're working with. And finally, you have to, not finally, but particularly, you need to understand the people that you're working with, your, the vulnerabilities and the aspects that uh, these people bring to the job. And it might be their training and their knowledge, or it might just be personal attributes. And then you also have to understand the environment in which these hazards are manifest. And that could be environment like outdoor, as in raining or uneven soil, or it might be the organizational environment or the design of the, of the work. And from that, you add controls, or you take away controls that will control those aspects of the, of the um, hazards and the exposure. And you would all know the um, hierarchy of controls, and I would go into a lot more detail with my students. And that's then going to tell you about the risk that you've got. So you've got your hazards, you've got the potential for exposure to those hazards, you've put in controls, and that tells you about the likelihood and consequence of adverse outcomes. But most importantly, you've got this in a dynamic equilibrium where if something changes about the hazard or the exposure or the controls or lack of controls, it changes your risk and you have to think about it all again. So rather than just give that dry little lecture, I now have an example. And so the context is you've got, um, you know, three people went out for a Sunday afternoon in the bush and we had the aim was to use a chainsaw to clear away a fire break in a property that adjoined a neighbor and a national park. And so the participants were uh, very experienced and mature individuals, you know, an academic, a toxicologist, um, a physiotherapist. We were going to use a chainsaw and a tractor to clear this fire break. And the risks, Undoubtedly, you know, if you didn't control this properly, you were going to have serious problems. So, um, you know, but we were going to control it properly. But because we had these people, we did a skills matrix, perhaps not written down. But what we decided was that there were two people, there was one person who could drive the tractor, two who could use the chainsaw, two who were good at lifting and carrying, and one who was good at running for things and called a gopher and ran for lunch. Uh, the hazards, we obviously had a chainsaw, we had a tractor, we had some chemicals in particularly well-labeled uh, containers, and it was outside so we had the sun. Uh, for controls, we made sure we had the appropriate equipment, we had people who talked with each other and communicated about what the task was going to be, we made sure the tools were all uh, maintained and appropriately controlled, and we had protective equipment including sunscreen. And so we understood the risks. Now, unfortunately, there's that dynamic equilibrium thing, so that if you change things, you needed to rethink this. So some of the conditions might have changed. There were some unintended interactions between the hazardous um, activities and people. While we intended to have it removed, uh, we had some people working outside their skill base. That man was not allowed to pick up that log. Um, we had uh, some biological hazards, like a bull ant that arrived. And so, but what finally happened, despite all that, we had a successful clearing of the fire break. There were no incidents. The, the surly neighbor didn't get us, and we were all exhausted and tired at the end. 
So the take home message is your hazards plus exposure minus your controls are in a dynamic equilibrium with your risk. And so that's what I tell my students. They may or may not be able to use them. <laughs>